Inspiring Arts and Culture on BBC World News. This week, Britain has been saying goodbye to the Queen in so many ways, the very public and the very personal. Tomorrow at her state funeral, the whole world will. This morning we'll hear what she meant around the globe after seven decades and seven days of sights and sounds that will echo on. This morning we'll be joined by two Prime Ministers, New Zealand's Jatinda Ardern and by the Prime Minister of Bangladesh, Sheikh Hasina. Reflecting on his role in the proceedings and the ongoing war in Ukraine, the Chief of the Defence Staff, Sir Tony Radican. And I've been speaking to a man who knew Her Majesty the Queen and the new King Charles III well, the former Secretary of State and now the United States Climate Envoy, John Kerry. We're live on BBC One and on the BBC Around the World this morning. And with me at the desk for the next hour, John Sentamu, the former Archbishop of York, who's been involved in the long planning for the state funeral, Victoria Newton, the editor-in-chief of The Sun newspaper, and Lindsay Hoyle, the Speaker of the House of Commons, who's presided over much of this week's extraordinary ceremony in Westminster. A very warm welcome to you today and especially to viewers who are joining us on BBC World. Now, this morning we will talk about the meticulous planning for the state funeral as the nation and countries right around the globe reflect on Her Late Majesty. But let's take a look at the front pages here in the UK. And one picture really dominates. We can see there on almost every newspaper the Queen's grandchildren standing vigil around her coffin. Images that will now be part of the collective memory after such an extraordinary few days. Um, Archbishop Sentamu, you have been talking to the royal family about preparations for this funeral, I think, since 2005. Can you give us a sense of what we can expect and we've seen the country trying to share in that with these thousands upon thousands of people coming to London to queue up for the chance of um, paying their own respects to the Queen. We can look at some of the live pictures there this morning, still thousands and thousands and thousands of people coming to see, prepared to spend you know, more than 20 hours in a queue. Um, that's now the scene inside Westminster Hall where people are still filing through for their own chance to have their own moment to pay their individual respects to Her Majesty. People lining up there to do that right now this morning. Now, you will have seen this week so many incredible images of what has been happening in London, not just those thousands of members of the public waiting patiently in line after line, but 
also members of the military. Glimpses of them rehearsing, sometimes under the cover of darkness, part of the preparations for what is set to be such a huge state funeral and a momentous event tomorrow. There are more than 4,000 soldiers involved in putting on the display of respect that will be perhaps one of the biggest moments of the 21st century so far. And the man in charge of that aspect is Sir Tony Radican, who's with us live here in the studio this morning, the Chief of the Defence Staff. Thank you so much for coming in. Good it's morning. such a busy time. Um, the Queen's funeral is a huge and solemn occasion for the armed forces. Can you give us a sense of the scale of this event? And, and, and the international community needs to hold Russia and President Putin to account. Okay, so Tony Radican, we must leave it there. Thank you so much for coming in and we wish you all best for tomorrow's enormous events. Thank you so much. Thank you very nine. much. Now, the military has been practicing to be ready for what will be that truly momentous occasion, the state funeral tomorrow. And there are plenty of people to impress. Leaders from right around the world, some 500 dignitaries have flown in from every corner of the globe. And of course, many of them from the Commonwealth, the organization that the Queen believed in, led and promoted. One diplomat told me, everyone wants to come to Her Majesty's funeral because she is one of the family. There is a sense of belonging. Well, one of them is New Zealand's Prime Minister, Jacinda Ardern, who met the new King yesterday. And she's here with us in the studio this morning. Welcome to you. Thank you very much for coming in. Good morning. What is it like being part of such this massive event? Who do you want to sit next to? Have you oh, decided? Or will you be told who to sit next to? I'll be sitting next to my partner, Claire. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, Jacinda Ardern, thank you so much for coming in this morning and being with us on this special day. Thank, thank you. you. Take good care. Thank you very much indeed. Now, listening to the Prime Minister of New Zealand there was our panel, Victoria Newton, John Sensimu, and the Speaker of the House of Commons, Lindsay Hoyle. Um, Victoria, firstly to you, we had such great affection for the late Queen, but also a pretty clear acknowledgement that the relationship between the monarchy and the rest of the world is going to have to evolve or will evolve. What do you think? That's right. Okay, thank you all very much for now. Well, there are in this morning's papers some signs of other news returning. There's talk of tax cuts and what the government is going to do about people's energy bills and a story, interestingly, about Liz Truss's chief of staff being involved in an FBI inquiry. Next week, we will be back to the normal thrash of news and we'll be at the Labour Party conference and interviewing Keir Starmer, the party's leader. But this morning, of course, we are concentrating on Her Late Majesty, who whose reign spanned decades of such change. Change, she once said, had become the constant. And one of the Commonwealth countries that's seen turbulence and transformation is Bangladesh. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina's father, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, was the founder of independent Bangladesh, but it retained its ties to the UK, with the Queen visiting on several occasions. I spoke to Sheikh Hasina about her memories of the Queen and why the Commonwealth matters so much today. Well, the Bangladeshi Prime Minister on her being here to pay her respects tomorrow. Um, Lindsay Hoyle, what will be on your mind tomorrow at the state funeral? Well, it certainly will be an absolutely an event that none of us really have seen the like of before and something that will be remembered and shown again for many, many years to come as people reflect on Her Majesty's role around the world. And the Queen in her role was unafraid to raise tricky questions sometimes with world leaders in those quiet diplomatic moments and her views on the need to tackle climate change and the new king's strong desire to do so were no secrets and that's been vital to others campaigning to that end let's hear now from america's climate change envoy and former secretary of state john kerry John Kerry speaking to us there about Her Late Majesty. Um, Archbishop, just to close with you this morning, really, you've been intimately involved in planning the funeral. You'll be there tomorrow. What will be on your mind? I think three thoughts. The first comes from my granddaughter, Abigail. When she heard that the Queen had died, she cried uncontrollably and then said, I'll never see another Queen in my lifetime. And then our brother, Mark VI, said, the world has changed. I want to combine those thoughts. I hope it, the world has changed for the better. Secondly, uh, the Queen wrote me a most wonderful letter uh, four weeks after the burial of uh, Prince Philip, uh, thanking me for the flowers, the, the prayers, and then ended by saying, when you are grieving, 
someone you deeply love, it isn't easy when you're having to do it in public. So my thought will be to the new king and the whole royal family. They are grieving publicly and they do find a space to do it. The second thought was when I went to see the queen in 2018, um, to ask permission to step down as Archbishop, I went with a huge burden of matters that one day may be revealed. And I knelt down and I said, Your Majesty, please pray for me. So I put my hands together and she put hers outside mine. And we were silent for three minutes. And at the end she said, Amen. When I got up, the burden had lifted. That's the kind of a queen we had. Her life was so rooted in Christ that she was able to transmit that same power, that love, that grace. So I will be saying, Mom, on that day, 12th of July 2018, you lifted my burden and I'm very thankful. Thank you for sharing such an incredible memory with us this morning, Archbishop Sentiment. It's been a pleasure to have you with us this morning and indeed a very, very warm thank you to you two also for joining us. So Lindsay Hoyle, the Speaker of the House of Commons and Victoria Newton, the Editor-in-Chief of The Sun newspaper. And of course a huge thank you to you for being with me this morning, whether you've been watching here at home in the UK or around the world. As always, you can catch up with anything you missed this morning on the iPlayer and of course you can follow the BBC's coverage of the state funeral tomorrow. Now usually we would close our conversation on Sunday mornings by trying to make sense of what we've heard over the hour. But today we wanted to leave you with something else, with this. Queen Elizabeth II, Her Late Majesty, in her own words. Goodbye. I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and to the service of our great imperial family to which we all belong. God help me to make good my vow and God bless all of you who are willing to share in it. Although that vow was made in my salad days when I was green in judgment, I do not regret nor attract one word of it. In our work and in the way we live, change has become a constant. Managing it has become an expanding discipline. The way we embrace it defines our future. It has sometimes been observed that what leaders do for their people today is government and politics. But what they do for the people of tomorrow, that is statesmanship. While we may have more still to endure, better days will return. We will be with our friends again. We will be with our families again. We will meet again. This is BBC News. These are the latest headlines in the UK and around the world. King Charles prepares to host a Buckingham Palace reception for the dignitaries in London here to attend Queen Elizabeth's funeral on Monday. President Biden is among the hundreds of world leaders now in London for the Queen's funeral service at Westminster Abbey. And I'm Karen Ginoni in Westminster, where mourners have less than one full day left to pay their respects to the Queen. I'll be speaking to some of the tens of thousands who already have. In other news, millions of people in southwestern Japan have been forced to leave their homes as the region braces itself for the biggest typhoon in decades. Ukraine says more than 59 bodies have now been recovered from a mass burial site in the recently liberated city of Izium. Hello and welcome if you're watching in the UK or around the world. 
King Charles will host a reception for hundreds of world leaders and royals at Buckingham Palace later today, ahead of Queen Elizabeth's funeral on Monday. Tens of thousands of people are still queuing to file past the late Queen's coffin in Westminster Hall on the final full day of lying in state.